Okay, here's a an optimization problem. Um, we want to take the max min story out of just the formal world of uh, graphs and things like that and make it practical. And we're going to do various variations on this. This is one of the simplest. The problem is to find the dimensions of the rectangle with a fixed area and having smallest possible perimeter. Um, and let me now mention some terminology. The uh, well, actually, let me introduce some variables first, and then I'll, it'll be a better place to put term, mention the terminology. So we'd like to have a picture for this. Well, I've drawn a rectangle here, and we'd like to name the relevant variables, and those are going to be the dimensions of the rectangle. So let's go ahead and uh, label this, let's say with x, and then we could label this with a y and then so let's put that down here so width equals x height equals y and then we are able to talk about these two crucial quantities the area is equal to xy for any rectangle and the crucial thing is that's a given number so that's what's called a constraint. Almost every interesting optimization problem is a constrained optimization problem. It's not just find the maximum of this thing or find the minimum of this thing. Because um, if I just said find the dimensions of the rectangle having smallest possible perimeter, that's a silly question. Just draw a little dot at a zero perimeter. But if it has to have area 400 meter, square meters, that's not such a trivial question. For example, this could be um, a pasture that we want or like, a, I don't know, a pigsty or something, something that a farmer wants to enclose by a fence. We want to use a rectangular fence for simplicity, and we want to use the smallest amount of fencing. That's a reasonable question, and it doesn't have just sort of a degenerate answer of just being the smallest possible rectangle, the, the zero rectangle. So we're almost always going to have some sort of constraint. That's going to be where some function of our variables is set equal to a constant. Now, the perimeter, that's a different function of those two variables. 2x plus 2y, and that's equal to, we don't know, that is the interesting quantity. That's sort of the output, um, and we want to figure out for all these pairs that pr product uh, that, uh, multiply to 400, what's the biggest perimeter, what's the smallest perimeter? And this is given, this is called the objective function. The uh, book doesn't use this terminology, but the thing you want to make bigger or smaller is the objective function. The constraint is something that's fixed to be a particular value. Okay, so here's how we use the constraint mathematically. Well, let's well let's experiment a little bit first. I've got this all set up dynamically, so let's experiment. I've got it actually set up, and I'll show you how in a minute. I've got it automatically set up so that the area of this thing is actually always exactly equal to 400 units. And we might want to think about how did I set that up. Then what I've got down here is I just used a sketchpad to measure all these four lengths and add all four up. That's, and of course these are equal and these are equal because it's a rectangle. And notice that I'm getting like something in the 90s, then 80s, then 80, and then oh, back up. It never seems to go in the 70s. And it looks like the, the optimal thing is just exactly when it's a square, a 20 by 20 square with perimeter 80. So can calculus explain why that's true? It seems it's what most people guess intuitively. Um, it's a good guess, but let's see. Alrighty, so here's what's different about this problem from the max min stuff that we had been doing. There's two variables. We don't know how to deal with two variables, but that's what the constraint is going to be for. That's going to allow us to eliminate a variable. It's very much like, it's similar to uh, related rates, where we had a master equation and often an auxiliary equation. Analogous somewhat to the master equation is the objective function, the thing we want really care about. And the auxiliary equation is very similar to the constraint here. It allows us to eliminate a variable. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just solve this for one of the variables in terms of the other. So y is going to be 400 over x. And then that allows us to express the perimeter.
as 2x plus 800 over x, just 2y, substituting that in. So that is a function of a single variable. We're not setting that equal to something and solving. That's very different. That's not what we're doing here. That would be, that's the kind of thing the constraint does, is set equal to a constant. We want to maximize this function, and that's where the calculus comes in. Okay, so we're going to take f prime of x. That's going to be 2 minus 800 over x squared. Oops. Because the derivative of x to the minus 1 is minus x to the minus 2. That's what we're going to set equal to 0, because we want to find a critical point. And then we're going to hope that it's going to be a, a minimum, and then we'll check, but we'll check that. Okay, so we set that equal to 0 and solve. That's not too hard. 800 over x squared equals 2. x squared equals 400. Just cross uh, multiplying the x squared and dividing by the 2. And x equals 20. Now notice it's not a plus or minus. Not plus or minus because it's a length. This is something, if it was just mathematics, so I'd say definitely plus or minus. But this is actually looking at um, an actual rectangle. And so that's just going to be 20. Okay. So what about y? Well, already we've confirmed our investigation that x should be 20 for the optimum. It should be right for, for y. Well, how do we do that? Well, once we've got a value for one of, the other, one of these f uh, quantities, we just go back to the constraint equation. We already have the constraint equation as a way to go from x to y. We used it once to eliminate y in favor of x. We just used it again to figure out the value of y and we get 20. Okay. So let's see. We're not quite done because we haven't really we're not really sure it's a minimum and not just like a maximum or an uphill rest or downhill rest or something like that. All this told us is that it's a critical point. So we can use various tests here. Um, the simplest test probably is to use the second derivative test. That's a little sketchy because it, it can give us an inconclusive answer but let's just go ahead and try it. It's real easy to take the second derivative here. The 2 drops out 800 times x to the minus 2, or minus 800 times x to the minus 2, becomes plus 1600 times x to the minus 3. And so remember, we only care about that at 20. And so that's 1600 over 20 cubed. We don't really care about what that is exactly. We just care about that it's positive. And remember, if you have a positive second derivative, concave up, at a critical point, that's definitely going to be a minimum. And we're good. So now I can reveal to you, I could have revealed to you a little while ago, but here's, I'm going to reveal to you on the second page how I actually set up this rectangle to definitely have this area. I use the constraint equation. And so you don't have to do this, but um, just wanted to illustrate again the role of this constraint. This guarantees, if y is 400 over x, it guarantees that I get the right kind of rectangle. So what I did was I just have a point that's guaranteed to have x being some number and then y being 400 over x. And so these are all rectangles with the same area and the optimal one was the square. Okay. So do you, one thing that is nice about this but it's also a little misleading is the beautiful symmetry of the answer. Um, not all optimization problems have beautifully symmetric answers but in general, almost always, if an optimization problem is symmetrically posed, like this one, there was no difference between the roles of x and y, then it usually does have a symmetrical answer. So in the next video, I'll show you a problem that purposely breaks that symmetry, so it's not that easy to guess what the answer is, but it'll still have a nice, a nice answer.